Back down the driveway, we're reviewing the cheapest car sold in America. It comes in at a little over $16,000. This is the Nissan Versa. Now I'm in the SR trim, which is their fully loaded model with heated seats and radar cruise control. We're gonna talk about how amazing the Versa is and why it's so important in America. <laughs> You know, it's a bit funny coming and reviewing the Versa. Literally got swapped out from the Maybach GLS 600, which was the most expensive car I've ever had on the channel. Now this is the cheapest car I've ever had on the channel. And I gotta turn down this AC and it is auto climate control, but the AC does work actually pretty well. We need more cheap cars in America. And like I said, this just comes under the uh, Mirage. I'm driving right by Mirage, speak of the devil. Um, and this is supposedly the best selling car in its segment. You know, Nissan used to sell six figures of these every single year here in North America. Now that was in the reign of Carlos Ghosn. Um, since then, volume has really fallen off a cliff. And I wouldn't be surprised if Nissan just kills this vehicle in a, in a few years in favor of the Sentra. And we'll talk about the, you know, the, the Sentra and how it does kind of hurt this vehicle a little bit at the end when I talk about a little bit about the buying guide. Styling here, they revised it in the past year or so with this refreshed Versa with a new V-Motion grill. We have new wheel styles. It does kind of look like a shrunken Altima, a shrunken uh, Sentra for sure. I think it's pretty cute looking. I love small cars. They're great for city traffic, as you can see. I'm in a city with plenty of traffic. And it's been awesome. Um, it's zero to 60 is slow as heck, but it's zero to 20 is actually pretty impressive. That's a very important metric for city driving. And here we are, we're gonna play with that accelerator. I'm not even in the sport mode. There's a little sport mode uh, button here. See that? And then it kind of simulates a gear somewhere around 40, 45 miles an hour. It depends how hard you're pushing it, right? With the CVT now. If I was in the market for this car, this is one of the few vehicles left in the North American market with a five-speed manual. Um, and you can get that on the base trim. That's the cheapest model. So that's one I would be going for. But we'll talk, like I said, we'll talk about buying uh, choices here at the end. This SR grade though, coming around $20,000, gets me blind spot monitor, radar cruise control, gives me the upgraded 17 inch wheels. Um, it gives me an upgraded MID here, which I totally don't need. I actually would probably prefer the, oh, wife's calling, let's cut. Yeah, so we are on our way taking Gigi to class right now, her dance class, she's not in school yet. This is the only school that, well, she's kind of in swim school too. So anyways, me and Gigi getting some one-on-one -on -one time and it is easy, easy getting the kids in the back. I've been taking my kids, my older kids to school this week in the Versa. Um, they've had no problem, they have plenty of leg room back there. I feel like I have a decent amount of leg room back there as well. There's a USB-C in the back. There's a USB-C underneath the armrest. There's another USB-C up here, as well as a USB-A. And since I'm on the topic of these USBs up here, it wasn't pulling up Android Auto at all. In fact, not only was it not pulling up Android Auto via the wire, which it doesn't have wireless by the way, and this SR has a larger screen as well, it wasn't even charging my phone through the USB-C or the USB-A, which are both data ports and charging ports. Um, and I have a wireless charger down here too that I don't use. But what I had to do was press and hold the volume button until the entire screen turned off and reset. It came back to life and Android Auto worked immediately. So if you're having that sort of issue on your Nissan product, maybe just press and hold the power button here. Um, and it'll reset the system and get you back on the road. All right, comfort in here. For a small car, I have actually a lot of room. My legs are a little cramped, I will say that. Uh, but headroom's actually really good. Um, shoulder room's excellent as well. You're gonna be sitting really close to your, your uh, front seat passenger, however. Um, and it reminds me a lot of my dad's little Yaris, one of the last generations of the Yaris built uh, for North America and we just don't get the Yaris anymore. And this is kind of like a remnant of that small subcompact little sedan market or hatchback market. I don't think Nissan makes the Versa hatchback anymore, which is quite unfortunate because that really helps the, the usability of this car. Yes, I can fold down the seats in the back. I have 15 cubic feet of cargo space, but still no hatchback. I'd much rather have a hatchback in the manual. All right, now that I'm idling, um, what kind of fuel economy am I getting? I'm seeing roughly 35 miles per gallon that's driving in town. 
Um, I don't push this vehicle too hard. It doesn't go anywhere, it just makes a lot of noise. So I'm just been kind of in fuel economy mode here and worst case scenario, probably gonna see about 30 miles per gallon in town from this little 1.6 liter with 122 horsepower. For such a small car, my visibility is good. I don't have any blind spots either, which is excellent. It does have lane assistance here. Now it's not gonna push you back in your lane, but it will vibrate the steering wheel to let you know you're leaving the lane. So I think that is, I think that's standard actually across all grades. Radar cruise control is only available here and blind spot monitor is available on the SV grade. The brakes are pretty mushy. Ooh, I think I need to get over there. Whoops, I missed my turn. Um, I have a small car, so we're gonna test uh, the small car nature here to see if we can sneak in. Well, I'm just gonna have to take the, the closest U-turn up here and we'll talk about its turning radius. Oh, I guess I could have been really aggressive there, but no need. We don't need to put our, ourselves or the Versa at, in danger. So we'll do, just do a U-turn, test the U-turn ability here. Um, cloth seats, you know, there aren't any leather options. This has the premium cloth, which I think you get as standard on the SV and above grades. Uh, let's, oh, okay, perfect timing. Let's. Oh, turning radius was almost too good there. <laughs> I didn't even lock it either. So amazing uh, handling and maneuverability for the streets. It's super easy to park. That backup camera that I started the video with, uh, it's decent enough resolution, but I feel like it's 60 frames per second. So it updates really, really quickly. It's really crisp in motion. So I like the backup camera on here, which I, you know, is standard even on the base S grade. So I think I said, an, oh, and this one has heated seats. I don't know if I mentioned, maybe I mentioned that in the beginning. So yeah, I like the Versa a lot. Um, not so much at $20,000. I think it's strongest at the base model around 16, 17 K after destination. I would get in the manual, but you're gonna have to pay a little bit more to get the CVT. Um, the thing is, once you get to around $20,000, you can get a base Sentra for about the price of this. No, it won't have heated seats and whatnot, but it's gonna have a lot more power, and I say a lot, uh, maybe about 20 horsepower more. But that's a lot when you're only starting at 120 horsepower. So that might be a nice upgrade as I come upon uh, another Nissan here, Versa in front of us in the SV grade, the middle grade. So if you get a nice lease on a Versa, go for it. Otherwise, um, if you can't get the base S grade, maybe upgrade uh, to the Sentra because the Sentra is a fantastic vehicle as well in the low 20s. Um, but yeah, very serviceable, great city car, great fuel economy. It's slow, but it handles well. It's very maneuverable and we need more cheap cars in America. They're all disappearing. Uh, this is one of the last vehicles and we know that the Mirage is gonna be canceled after 2025. So it really doesn't have a whole lot of, and the Rio's gone, um, the Honda Fit's gone. I could keep going, I already talked about the Yaris. They're all gone and the last one standing here is the, the cute little Versa with a nice leather wrapped steering wheel. Maybe that's something you get on the SR grade, which might be worth upgrading for it. My hands are pretty happy on it, but I'm going into there. Thank you, Nissan, for sending me uh, this very, very affordable new car here in 2024. Can't really say that about most cars uh, in this day and age. So I really appreciate this car. I like the tech, uh, the safety, and the overall functionality of this uh, very affordable uh, to own and affordable to maintain and run little Nissan Versa. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Signing out as we're heading to dance class. Gigi, you wanna say goodbye? Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye.